can I can't even wrap my mind around odd? something like that. It's kind of odd. No, it's totally now, is that, odd. Is that, is that warfare or is that just an act of God that somehow just happened? I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question. It's that's a really, a really good, good question. Is there is there email traffic that would prove one way or the other? Yes, there is. Are there uh, government um, cablegrams and traffic and things happened that would prove one way or the other? Yes, there is. Are there letters? Are there doctors? Some of the doctors are still alive. Most of them have been killed already. Who were there at the ground zero when the pandemic started? Most of them are dead, though. That's kind of odd, wouldn't you say? No, I'm not a conspiracy person. I want to see it black and white. I want to see the proof. And there is proof out there to prove this one way or the other. So I don't want to say one way or the other. This is not an act of war, but it could be. Mm-hmm. I can't prove it one way or the other. I'd like to know one way or the other. So let's see the data. Yeah, it's to me. It's to me. It's just scary. I'm I'm not really a big conspiracy person either. But when you hear stuff like that, it, it just you can't help but just look deeper into it and try to figure out what happened and, and well, where shit's going think, wrong. Well, if you want to think about the future of warfare, you shouldn't be investing in you know ships and bombs and the big stuff or nuclear nuclear bombs and all the other stuff. The stockpiles of everything we have to blow stuff and destroy. That's not the future of warfare. The future of warfare is cyber, and that's why making a space command, the first thing we do, what? We made a space command? Why wouldn't you make a cyber command at the same level in Joint Chiefs of Staff? Because that's where it's all at. It's about electronics. It's all about that. Then after a cyber command, should have been like an MVC command. Should have been nuclear, biological, chemical, and all the other stuff command after cyber. Space would be third after cyber and after an MVCRE or MVC burn. Chemical, radiological, biological, all that. So what the Seaburn command is, if I was a nation I wanted to take over, let's say, let's say New York City wanted to, or New York State wanted to take over New York City. Because New York State is just so sick of New York City. Mm-hmm. So if we just drop a couple of nuclear bombs in New York City and just flatten it, well, we destroyed all the infrastructure. We destroyed all of the power plants, all the dams, all the water, everything else. And nobody's going to live within 100 square miles of where all those bombs dropped, right? But what if we let a biological virus into the city and its, it's half-life of the biological that we released into the city had a half-life of like, uh, let's say, two months and it killed off 80% of the population – you would depopulate an entire city, and then the city would be clean in two months that you could move in and take over. Not a building fell, not a bomb, not a nothing, just to just get rid of all the people. Mm-hmm. How, how good would that warfare be for a nation that wanted to take over another nation? You wouldn't have to worry about any of the infrastructure. You just go in there and clean up a little bit, get rid of all that. And within two months, you can move in? Yeah. Look at the cost savings it would be in warfare, not to take a building down with a bomb, but just to get rid of all the people in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does seem, I mean, guns and bombs are... It's the past. It's, it's, it's the past. gone. Yeah. All you have now is going to be cyber warfare and biological and chemical warfare. It's all that's left. What? And then all you, then all you need is the delivery systems. And delivery systems is all by drone anyway. So all you need is some drone pilots. If you're good with the Xbox, mm-hmm. then you're a drone pilot. You can deliver the biological chemical. You can do whatever you want from your mm-hmm. seat. You can just sit there and play the game. Okay, drops. And you don't need to yeah. drop them. Yeah. You just crash your UAV and the target spot you want. Have you ever messed with those new mess- drones, those DJI, like phantom drones that have the cameras on them? Have you ever messed around with those? The ones you can buy at like was- Walmart? Well, I, I started flying drones in um, 1999. Uh, some of the first drones that were ever used and militarized. I was one of the first person to do a call for fire with mortar strikes out of a drone. So I had my little drone. I was flying it around. And I was doing call for fire, hitting mortars. So yeah, I we uh, it was basically trailblazing drone technology in the uh, late '90s, early 2000s, before 9/11. And when you launched your, how did you launch that drone? We did a uh, hand launch. You throw them in the air. We okay. did um, uh, catapult launches. Okay. Um, we also would take them off from runways too. So I've I've flown drones, you know, the big ones, the dual prop, the single prop, the turbo prop, the big ones, the small ones, the micro drones, the real little ones, 
and the real big ones. And we did uh, explosives on the drones. We did cameras. We did uh, chemical biological testing um, devices on the drones so we could fly them through an area. And if it was contaminated, we would purposely crash it out in the ocean. If it showed back that it was not contaminated, we could bring it back and land it. Because basically, you crash something in the ocean, the ocean cleans it up, no matter okay. what it is. So you don't want to bring it back if it has stuff on it. So you just crash it purposely because it's it's got affected. It had stuff on it. Don't bring it back. What were you? What SEAL team were you on when you were involved in the raid of Saddam's palace? Can you talk about that? I was on a SEAL team, and we raided a lot of palaces as we were going through there. And uh, we stayed in this hangar, and it was all shot up. It was bullet-ridden hangar. That was uh, it was a pretty cool little hangar. But, uh, and we also stayed in a place called the VVIP um, lounge for uh, the ba uh, Baghdad airport. So I will say those two things, a shot up hangar and a VVIP uh, lounge is okay. the places I worked out of. That's about all I would say. And if you know those areas, then you know who I was working with. But um, I know the part of your book where you're, you're talking about you guys were going down a river near the palace and you had to fly, you know. Shot a la Rab. I crashed a UAV on that river, and I really, I still have nightmares about crashing UAVs that caused problems. I screwed up, and I still have like really big um, problems with that screw up. Like when I make mistakes, I own them. I say, "Hey, I messed up." Right. I crashed a UAV, and I and I and I'm cost lives. I cost us not to have the intel we needed, and I don't know how many people. Um, I could have saved if I didn't crash that one UAV. So it, really, I, it, haunts, it haunts me. It haunts you, but I think it it speaks volumes that you're able to own up to it. Because honestly, I mean, people that are able to fail and live with it and talk about it and share it with people, that is what enables you to succeed, is to be able to fail and fail and fail and be okay. You're going to miss you're going to miss a dozen shots, but you're yep. still going to make lots and lots of game winning shots. Yeah. And I think that spoke volumes that really stuck with me in your book. I mean, we, we all should. And yeah. this is, here's an example of somebody. I, I, if I did it, if I messed up, I don't admit it. And I've definitely had my, my share of screw ups. And sometimes it takes a long time to realize how bad you're screwing up. And then when you finally realize it and then you're like, well, it's, it's kind of too late now where you stew on it. And I would stew on stuff because I get so mm -hmm. upset. And I've stewed and I've messed up and then I stewed on it. And then I finally realized and I was like, well, it's too late now. I, I, I wish I could go back in time and fix that. I would, I would immediately say I screwed up and, you know, this is what I want to do to make up for my screw up. And let's get back into business. Let's, fi let's fix it and let's drive on. And right, get better. Times, I wish I could have done that earlier. You know, it would have been better. There, here's an example of somebody who screwed up and never owned up to it and it caused someone here it is if you're a navy captain on an aircraft carrier you're the you're the captain you're the skipper there's an admiral above, above you who's running a carrier battle group but running that ship the day-to-day -day running and every person on ship four thousand people who are working that ship that 06 that captain he's the guy he's in charge now let's say you had a young seaman this young kid he's 19 years old and he's away from home and he's new in the navy he's really it's tough and his kid is having you know some issues and he's not getting along with a lot of people he's doing whatever <laughs> But he's a happy kid. Man, a kid, I have a video of the kid from a day before the incident where he's like, he's mopping the hallway and he's dancing around, he's dancing to music. He's just a 19-year-old kid. The captain hears that this kid has some suicide ideation, says he's really, he's really upset. The captain calls, a captain's call for the whole division and has like 500 people lined up in the hangar decks. And he starts making fun of the kid in front of everybody by name to the entire 500 people standing there. Makes fun of the kid because the kid is weak, because the kid is thinking about committing suicide. He's just faking it. He doesn't know. Da, da, da. And the captain, the leader of that ship, is making fun of this kid by name in front of 500 of his peers. And then the kid attempts suicide on the ship and didn't happen. The captain further makes fun of him and puts him in the brig 
And then the kid gets sent to the brig and hangs himself with his shoelaces in the brig and is dead now. Do you think that captain was punished or the captain admitted that, hey, you know, it was in front of 500 people. I made fun of the kid. I didn't really understand where the, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know. Did the captain say any of that? No, that captain got promoted to admiral. And that kid is dead. Who killed himself. And as an organization, if you can see that, do you see the bottom of that mug? Hick Strong. Hick Strong, yeah. So look up the hashtag and hashtag, hashtag Hick Strong and look up the HickStrong.org, I think it is. We'll tell you the whole story. As we tell you about the mother and the father who makes these mugs, they're called hug mugs. Because the mother and father of that young seaman, you know, Hicks, who just breaks my heart. So Mike and Joe Lee are the parents. And, and they're at my house, and they gave me this mug because they asked all the sailors on the ship who were friends with their son before he killed himself. They said, what could we have done? And all the, all the kids were like, to the parents, is that you couldn't have done anything. It was the captain. Ridiculed your son in front of everybody. And, like, everything was going on. They talked about it all. They said, well, is there anything that if you had – you know, what would you want? And a lot of sailors said, we just, just sometimes just give a hug, man, give support. And she said, and I said, you guys drink coffee all the time, but what if I made a hug mug? Hmm. What if we made hug mugs and it says hug mug on the handle that you have this big mug you're drinking coffee out of this made, custom made for me. She made this one for me with this big sunflower on it. And the other side, it says courageous to remind me every day that we're all courageous so every morning I drink coffee, it's Jolie Hicks, a wonderful lady. She gives me a hug every morning I drink coffee because I have a mug. I'm going to drink a hug mug. I'm going to get a hug right now. Thank that's you, beautiful. Jolie. 